The thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger, has been extinct for nearly a century. Now, thanks to advances in genetic engineering, some scientists believe we could bring it back from the dead. But before diving headfirst into this Jurassic Park fantasy, we must ask a serious question. Should we? We're hoping that within a decade we'll be at the point of having that early embryo stage that we're looking at turning into a whole living animal to bring back. So we wouldn't bring back just one, we would bring back many. Now with all of these resources, we have a real chance of making this a reality. I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Colossal Biosciences, a company dedicated to de-extinction efforts, has raised a total of $435 million in funding since its launch in September 2021. This funding supports projects aimed at reviving extinct creatures such as the woolly mammoth, thylacine and the dodo. Notably, in 2022, the University of Melbourne raised a $10 million donation to establish the Thylacine Integrated Genetic Restoration Research Lab in collaboration with Colossal Biosciences. This lab focuses on advancing the genetic research necessary for the potential revival of the thylacine. The thylacine's extinction is often portrayed as a tragedy of human ignorance. Hunted relentlessly by settlers who feared for their sheep, the last known thylacine died in captivity in 1936. But here's the uncomfortable truth. If we brought the thylacine back today, we could very well be setting it up for the exact same fate all over again. Sheep farming is a massive part of Tasmania's economy. As of 2021, there were over 2.3 million sheep in Tasmania, a state with a population of just over half a million people. Wool and meat production contribute hundreds of millions of dollars to the state's economy every year. Now imagine introducing an apex predator like the thylacine back into this environment. Even if they primarily targeted wild prey, some would inevitably go after livestock, especially as habitat loss continues to shrink their natural hunting grounds. History tells us exactly how this would play out. Farmers, already under economic pressure, would see the thylacine as a threat, and if the past is anything to go by, calls for government sanctioned culling wouldn't be far behind. If you think this sounds alarmist, just look at the dingo. Australia's only remaining native apex predator. Despite playing a vital role in maintaining healthy ecosystems, dingoes are relentlessly persecuted. Every year, tens of thousands of dingoes are killed to protect livestock, often through cruel methods like aerial baiting with poison. In Victoria, the government recently extended legal dingo culling until 2028, even as indigenous groups and conservationists warned that this could drive populations towards extinction. Dingoes help regulate populations of invasive species like feral cats and foxes. Without them, ecosystems become imbalanced. If we can't even coexist with the apex predators we still have, what hope would a resurrected thylacine have? Would thylacines even be able to compete with established predators like feral cats and foxes? Or would they struggle to survive in an ecosystem that's drastically different from the one that they left behind? The allure of de-extinction is powerful. The idea of righting humanity's wrongs and bringing back a lost piece of nature is undeniably romantic. But we need to remember, Jurassic Park wasn't a blueprint for scientific achievement. It was a cautionary tale. Instead of resurrecting extinct species, what if we focused our time, energy and money on saving the ones that we still have? Right now, hundreds of Australia's native species are teetering on the brink of extinction due to habitat loss, climate change and invasive species. Wouldn't our resources be better spent protecting these vulnerable species and preserving the ecosystems that we still have? We owe it to our living wildlife to ensure that they don't share the same fate as the thylacine. The idea of bringing back the thylacine sparks the imagination. But unless we change our relationship with apex predators, history will only repeat itself. Before we bring back what's lost, let's learn to coexist with the wildlife still fighting for survival today. Otherwise, we're not just resurrecting the past, we're dooming it to die all over again. <laughs>